I would have to agree that the Internet of Things is a little impersonal, um, we, <laughs> unless you refer to women. Uh, we decided to build an experience uh, as opposed to a thing. It's really a blend of software and hardware that creates this unique experience that's a true utility. And that's Lockatron. And it's, it's taken us a couple of years, and we've been working on it for a while. But rather than say anything more, I'll just give you the introduction video. <laughs> oh. There we go. That was the video for a campaign that we just did, and I'm going to take a few, uh, a crowdfunding campaign we just did, and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about that because it's kind of interesting. Um, a little bit of our history. We've been working on Lockatron for the past couple of years now. Um, we felt that access was a big problem, and we came from the perspective of, you know, if we put internet in something like a door lock, what can that enable? Uh, so this is the first version of Lockatron. Paul and I, uh, on some street in San Francisco, and someone said, oh, what's that? I'll take a photo of you, and they posted on Twitter. Um, and that was a couple of years ago. And we got a little bit of interest when we talked about Lockatron then, but we knew we needed a boost. And we saw this past year has really been sort of the year for crowdfunded hardware. And, and it, it started with sort of the Twine and the Elevation Dock, if you guys remember those, it's, it's been a long time. And then reached a peak with the Pebble this summer, Ouya, eight and $10 million, Oculus, and so forth. So we thought, wow, cool. We, we suddenly have this avenue to raise this capital, which wasn't open before. Um, venture capital has traditionally been a little bit cagey about hardware. Uh, and so crowdfunding was a tremendous, tremendous place. Uh, but the problem was, Kickstarter started to, to clamp down on some of these projects, and, and we were one of the first ones. So the, the quick history there is on September 19th, we'd been working all summer long on preparing our Kickstarter. We, that video that we, we showed is, is uh, part of our, our long video, which took 45 days to make. We'd been preparing everything. We submit our application, think it's going to be a pretty quick process. And then the next day, this lands on Kickstarter. And it was a blog post essentially detailing that Kickstarter is not a store for products that haven't been made yet. And they said, you know, you can't have renders anymore in your videos, you can't have more than one, uh, you can't sell more than one of your product and so forth. And we thought, okay, that's fine, we'll fix our video, we've got our prototypes, so we'll just show them off. Um, we do that, and then we resubmit, and it turns out, oh no, we were not rejected because we were against the new rules. We were rejected because one of the Kickstarter founders said that we were quote unquote home improvement, which is rejected under their guidelines. And we thought this was a little odd because they've had other things like uh, power outlets, light switches, and so forth. Um, so it seemed like in general, they're just sort of clamping down on these products and we were caught up right in the midst of it. And so we had a lot of momentum 
but we knew we had to launch this product somehow, and we, we thought about different options. And it was Dalton Caldwell with app.net that really inspired us, you know, hey, maybe we can crowdfund this on our own. Maybe we can raise the capital without any platform whatsoever. And so uh, between the 25th and the 28th, we sort of regrouped our designer, redid our homepage, built a beautiful, beautiful homepage for raising money. Um, our developer, who's phenomenal, put together the back end. And we, we had our own crowdfunding site. And in a, a few days, we, we basically went to the press and we, we put it together. And this is right before we launched. You know, the three of us uh, each backed a Locatron. And we put it up there. We had an article on TechCrunch, and we just sort of waited, and we saw what happened. And uh, within a few days, uh, things just went crazy. We, we sold $500,000 uh, worth of Locatron in the first day. Uh, throughout the 30-day campaign, we had 14, 000, over 14,000 units reserved, $2.2 .2 million. But this is all on our own. We didn't have Kickstarter behind us. We didn't have anything except for a, a lot of press and a lot of interest, genuine interest in Locatron. And so I think what was fascinating about that is that Kickstarter essentially laid out the behavior for, for crowdfunding products, but consumers were ready to do it on our website w without the, the Kickstarter logo. Um, so we decided this wasn't core to our business, and we wanted to give it away. And so we open sourced most of our code into Self-Starter. So Self-Starter is a roll-your-own, open source crowdfunding platform. And a number of companies have actually used it. Uh, Wallet Tracker is one of them who's finished successfully. LumaWake still got a campaign going. They've got a, a smart iPhone dock. Restore the Shore was actually after the Hurricane Sandy on the East Coast in the US. It was to restore the, the New Jersey shore. And, and they successfully raised all of their money in a, in a day or two using Self-Starter. So um, it was a really cool idea, but we found that Self-Starter really isn't the answer. And there's a lot of problems with it that Kickstarter doesn't solve, Self-Starter doesn't solve. You know, there's definitely other platforms like Indiegogo, but we need something more tailored for products and hardware, which involve oversight uh, on the part of the, the platform to say, this product can be made or this product can't be made. Advice for people who you know, are first-time uh, product creators, uh, connecting them with engineering and production talent, manufacturer relationships, some sort of escrow so that all of the customer's money isn't at risk, and so forth. Um, marketing help and, and, and such. So that is the story of Self-Starter. I wanted to shoot over to my co-founder, Paul, here for the last couple of minutes to talk about all the progress we've made with Locatron and show off some of our prototypes. Thanks, Cameron. Yep. So as Cameron mentioned, Locatron in this iteration is actually the second generation prototype. Um, we had a previous product that we sold that I think we made a lot of the classic mistakes that you see with Internet of Things devices. Uh, we basically just took an off-the-shelf device, slapped an Internet connection in there, and uh, hoped it would be good to go. And we, we realized there's a lot of things that we needed to change for the second generation to make it a successful product. We had a base station that it required to uh, connect to the internet. It wasn't very tailored for uh, a lot of different use cases, so we needed to basically put a Wi-Fi connection in there, a Bluetooth connection, and get rid of the, the central hub for the device. Um, there, there's a question of we're looking at this future of everything's connected, but how do we get there? And we found it's a lot easier to get there if you use what's already in place. So with the new version of Locatron, we changed it. So rather than being a replacement door lock that you have to take out and throw your old lock away, the new, new device just fits over your existing lock. So this is a traditional American door lock. Uh, the Locatron basically has a mold that fits, fits on top, and you just essentially click it over. Oops. There we go. So it just installs literally in a couple of seconds there. So now you have an internet-connected door lock. You can lock and unlock it from anywhere in the world. And I think there's a big, big component there. It's, it's not necessarily about putting internet connections in devices. It's about taking problems that people already have and enabling them to solve it better. And that's very much what we're trying to do here with Locatron. It's, we saw this problem of people uh, being locked out of their houses, uh, Airbnb being their places and not being able to let guests in. 
uh, managing a co-working space, and all these things that could be made better with an internet connection. So we're, we're very happy with the, the progress to date and uh, very much looking forward to getting it out there next year. So follow us on Twitter at Lockatron or uh, nominate us for a Crunchy for the TechCrunch Awards. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, guys. That's super impressive. $2 million raised, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, $2.2 .2 million, yeah. And no dilution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to give any of it to Kickstarter. So uh, yeah, just credit card. Well, to Kickstarter or to investors, like yes. no, no angels, no VCs. So a big thing about Kickstarter is that we're not taking the money until we're ready to ship the product. So we don't get the money until a week before we ship the product, which means our incentives are aligned with the customer. Um, it also means that we've had to line up some resources uh, from, from debt and angel investors so that we can make sure we, we get the product. Oh, out. so you're getting angel investors? We had angel investors before, yep. yep. Now so that's another reason why self-starter isn't ideal for every company. If you don't have any capital whatsoever, it's a bit, bit challenging. Do you, uh, are you not afraid of people hacking this thing? Like, uh, like I could, you know, walk in <laughs> Paris and open doors. Right, but <laughs> so the, the incentive model for hacking is a little bit different. If you're in Paris and you, there's, there's very little you can gain from hacking a door in California, uh, I think the, the types of hackers that go after that are the types that are going after payment information. So in Paris, there's a lot of use for having somebody's credit card number that's in California, but not so much for unlocking a random door. Uh, but that said, we have put a lot of effort into ensuring there's multiple layers of security in there, everything from the low-level communications to the application end and very intense monitoring. What's the price? Uh, 179 right now for retail. And if I order one today, when do I get it? Uh, the first batch starts shipping in March, second batch in May. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. great. I'm going to so order much, a few Louis. of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Thank you very much. <laughs>